All right, so we started uh, this chapter, right? Chapter three. Uh, with let's uh, go back to the beginning of it. Um, just to summarize what we've uh, talked about last time. So mutual inductance. We started with um, with self inductance, right? Uh, which is just a review from uh, last class, um, or maybe the first circuit class. Right, um, definition of, or how do you get self-inductance, the equation for self-inductance, L, that's what you're familiar with, right, L, the units at Henry's, and then um, how to determine uh, the polarity of a voltage across self-inductance, which is basically um, a function of the slope, right, of the current through the inductor, right, so that's how you determine the polarity of the voltage across self-inductance. And then we look at uh, a new type of inductance called mutual inductance, which occurs because there are two neighboring circuits coupled with uh, magnetic flux, just like that one right here, right? And uh, one, will, one coil would um, produce a flux inside the core and, and the other coil will see We'll see that uh, same flux or portion of the flux, and then uh, it would induce voltage from the um, other uh, circuit, right? So that's what's called the, uh, that's what causes the mutual inductance, right? And I have this il illustration to explain that. Then mathematically, that flux is divided into two, right? Um, self plus uh, portion of the flux that couples to the other coil. And from there, we get two different inductances. The first one is the one that we saw earlier. That's the self-inductance on the first coil. And then on the second coil, you have the mutual inductance, M, right? Okay, and then as you see from the equation right here, that self-inductance is due to its own current. So V1 is LD, L1 DI1 DT, whereas uh, mutual inductance caused by uh, a different current, right? So V2 across the second coil is M21 DI1, right, instead of two, right? And if we do the opposite way, then you have the same effect of self-inductance on coil number two and mutual inductance on coil number one, right? And then I spoke about um, the different ways to uh, take advantage of mutually, mutually coupled circuits, right? Okay, now the next discussion, any question on on the summary that we did uh, on Monday? Okay, if not, let's uh, look at this next one. So this next one refers to, okay, in, in self-inductance, um, earlier I said that in order to determine voltage or polar the polarity of the voltage across self-inductance, all you need to is all you need to uh, look at is the slope of inductor current, right? If the slope is positive, then voltage across the self-inductance will be positive. If it's negative, then it will be negative as well. Now, what about mutual inductance? How do you determine um, the polarity of the voltage across mutual inductance? That's not gonna be as simple because now you have to apply this um, rule called um, dot convention, right? So uh, that convention is required to determine the polarity of mutually induced voltage. Um, this dot right here will be placed at one end of each of the magnetically coupled coil, and it will then this dot um, dotted terminal will be given for this class. Right. Um, in real world um, in, and in practice, sometimes uh, manufacturers will give you the dot. Uh, they will they will mark where the dot is, but sometimes it does not, right? And um, then how do you know where to place the dot? You can put it anywhere, right? And at either end. But um, what the dot means is that um, if you have an inductor, for example, let me just draw right here. Let's say I have an inductor, and let's say this is the More of the inductor.
there. And then let's say I'm winding two, two different coils. Something like this. Uh, let's do the first coil first. If let's say, okay, I have an inductor, but there's no dot on it, then just uh, as assign the dot terminal to any one of the uh, uh, ter uh, terminal here. You can either put it over here or over here. It doesn't matter, right? So let's say I put it right here. And so you mark the dot right there. Then if let's say you have another coil and you don't know where the dot terminal either, let's say you have inductor, you buy, you buy an inductor that has two coils and it doesn't give you, uh, let me use, uh, it doesn't give you the the dot terminals, the, the dot markings, then let's say, let me draw this. Next to it, just like this, right? There you go. Then keep in mind, uh, or uh, if you look at um, the second coil, um, pay attention to the how the coil is wound. You can see that both coils are wound the same way, right? Um, out and in, right? You can see that, right? The same thing with the, the next one. This is the first coil. This is the second coil. You can see that they're wound the same way. Right now, of course, if you buy the inductor that has two coils, you won't you you will not be able to see the orientation of how the coils are are being wound, right? So don't worry, you know, if you don't know how, then then you will, right? Again, by um, marking the dot, right? So just mark a dot to the first coil anywhere, let's say on that terminal, and then what you do is you apply um, a sine wave. Right. Um, so apply, let's connect this one to a function generator and apply a sine wave, plus minus. So as the as the sine wave goes positive, right? And of course this is gonna be negative, right? Now on the other coil, right, you would connect um, oscilloscope, right? So you can connect, let's say, channel B of oscilloscope. Right. And then channel A, you, you put over here. Okay. Like that. Okay. Now you look at the oscilloscope. If, if they are wound the same way, just like this, right? And of course, again, you don't know this, right? If they're wound the same way, then uh, if you look at the oscilloscope, right? If channel A so shows like this, right, that's channel A, that's channel A, and let's say channel B also does the same way like this, right? They're basically in phase. Then um, that means this is also a, a dot terminal. That means they are wound the same way. Physically, they are wound the same way inside. Okay, that's what it means. If let's say you have another one, the third one, right, and it's wound wound this uh, different way, so out, in, right, out, in, like this, like there. Then, of course, since since the third one is wound different way. Like unlike the other two, then if you have channel three, like, and let's say this is connected to channel three or channel C, sorry, to the oscilloscope, then channel C would be looking like the opposite uh, waveform like this. Okay, because again, it's physically wound different way, and so because of that, we know because we don't know how they wound inside. All we know is these voltages, right? So now I know that A and B are on the same um, side of a uh, terminal. So it's gonna be dot right there, dot right there. If you assign dot for, for coil one right here, then coil B will be the same way, the same side, 
and then channel um, coil three would be on the opposite side right there. Make sense? Are there any questions on this? So that's what um, a dot terminal is basically. It shows us, it indicates how a coil is uh, physically wound around uh, the core. Right. So let's um, use that um, dot terminals to determine um, the polarity of the voltage across mutually induced voltage. Okay. All right. So dot convention is stated as follows. If a current enters the dotted terminal of one coil, the reference polarity of the mutual voltage in the second coil is positive at the dotted terminal of the second coil. See that? Um, if a current enters the dotted terminal of one coil, the reference polarity of the mutual voltage in the in the second coil, second coil, is positive at the dotted terminal of the second coil. Right. So we'll we'll look at some examples. Conversely, um, dot convention may also be stated as follows. Instead of enters, it could be leaving, right? So instead of entering the dot, if a current leaves the dotted terminal of one coil, then the reference polarity of the mutual voltage in the second coil is negative at the dotted terminal of the second coil, right? So I know maybe this is not making sense right now, but uh, let's look at some examples. Um, so the only thing is here is that if current enters a dotted terminal on one coil, then at the uh, dot at the other uh, at the dot terminal on the other coil, it will be positive voltage, right? So current enters the dot terminal on one coil, on the second coil, um, at the dot terminal, voltage will be positive. That's what it is, right? And if it's leaving, it's the opposite. Okay, let's look at this first example, and then let's see if you have any questions. Right? Let me change it to. Again. So here uh, I have uh, coils, right? Let's go slow on this one. I have two coils, right? Uh, the dotted terminals are um, already defined that way, right? But um, as you can see, current is being injected on first coil, nothing on the second coil, right? No current injected on the second coil, just the first coil. So then um, for this example, I've already assigned a positive on this terminal, see that? Negative on that terminal, right? And uh, to be the polarity of the um, mutually induced voltage. Right? Let's see if this assumption is correct. Okay, so I assume, I would assume that the uh, polarity of the mutually induced voltage is plus minus that way. Okay, let's see, let's check. Okay, um, current on the first coil, right, goes into, you can see the current goes into, Right. So let me verify. If uh, what 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 does it mean by current going into the coil? You can see here, right? Current is going into the coil through the dotted terminal. Right. You see. You see that, right? Current goes. That current is is going into the coil through the dotted terminal. So this is what we refer to as current entering the dotted terminal. Whereas if I have the this case right here, you can see that the, in this case, current leaves the coil. Right? Current is leaving the coil through the dotted terminal. So this is what we call, this is what we refer to as current leaving the dotted terminal. So the first one, current entering. The second one, current leaving. Any questions? So back to this example. Uh, what do we have here? We have current entering, right? Current entering the coil on the first uh, coil right there, right? So the self-induced voltage, as we know, is going to be plus minus that way, right? Uh, that's just like um, any impedance, right? Like a drop. So L1, DI1, DT. So that's that should be something that you already know, right? From previous circuit class. Now, we know that um, we have a mutually induced voltage here, right? And then how do you determine the polarity of the mutually induced voltage? As I said earlier, I already assume it's plus minus that way, right? So let's see if that's correct. According to dot convention, if current enters the dotted terminal of one coil, then on the other coil, 
the current, sorry, not current, the polarity of the voltage at the dotted terminal would be positive right there. So this is based on the dot convention. If this is positive, that means the bottom one will be negative. As you can see, my assumption is correct. Okay. Therefore, um, my assumption right here is correct. That V2 induced would be M di1 dt. Right. Any question on this? Yeah, let's move on to the next example. Yeah, make sure you are clear on this. Otherwise, uh, when we get into circuit analysis, it gets confusing if you don't know how to uh, determine this polarity, okay? So again, on the second coil, I'm assuming again, right? I have two coils. I have current injected to the first coil, right? And then um, I'm assuming voltage to be plus minus that way, mutually induced voltage. Okay? mutually induced voltage to be plus minus on the second coil that way. Let's see if that's true. Right, so now, for now, just ignore this, right, ignore this. That's the assumption I had. Let's see if that's correct, okay? I'm gonna erase that uh, later on. Okay, so current goes into the first coil. Uh, no, sorry, current is injected. Current is injected into the first coil. And look at how the current goes um, uh, on the dotted terminal. Is that going into or leaving? You can see it is leaving the coil. See that? That current I1 is leaving the coil through the dotted terminal. So this is what we refer to as current leaving. If the current is leaving the dotted terminal of the first coil, then on the second coil at the dotted terminal, according to that convention, the polarity would be negative, right? Since this is leaves, right? Current leaves, that means negative on the dotted terminal. Make sense? If that's negative, that means this is positive. So the actual polarity of the mutually induced voltage is minus plus that way. Okay, so we're done with determining the polarity. However, remember earlier I assume I assume the polarity the polarity to be plus minus that way, right? So therefore I see that my assumption is wrong. Right? It's actually the opposite. Right? That's why my initial assumption. Right, right there would be negative, right? Would be the negative of my initial assumption. Okay. Any question on this? So the dot is just saying that the the sign at those two points are the same, basically. Um. Yes. When you apply voltage, yes. Uh, dotted terminals uh, indicate that um, those coils have the same instantaneous polarity. Yes. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Okay. Now, um, let's. Oh, there's another example here. Actually, two more examples. Let's do it faster. Let's see if you. Uh, uh, can uh, answer this uh, yourself, okay? So current is uh, injected on the first coil. I assume on the second coil, positive, negative that way, right? And then current is injected to the first coil and you can see current goes into or enters, right? The coil through the dotted terminal. By dot convention, we, we know that on the second coil at the dotted terminal, the, the polarity would be positive, right? If that's positive, that means the other side will be negative, right? And you can see clearly that's the opposite of my assumption. That's why I put negative of the initial assumption, right? Last example, maybe? Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, well, I have more actually. All right, so over here I have um, current goes into. Uh, not current goes into, but current is injected on the first coil. And the way we uh, the current is flowing is that it leaves, right? It's leaving the dotted terminal, right? It's leaving the coil through the dotted terminal, right? So that, therefore, this is leaving again, right? If it's leaving, that means on the other side, on the other coil, right? Uh, at the dotted terminal, you have a negative uh, sign. 
Okay. If that's negative, that means this is positive. The initial assumption I had is positive negative. So you can see that they match. Right. So therefore, I didn't put any negative sign on my initial equation. Traffic. Okay. Hi. Um, good morning. So good morning. on on your diagram with the plus and the minus that you have circled in red, that's the actual voltage, but we're using the, um, I guess this dot in order to make an assumption, like it's just for convention, is that correct? Uh, you mean when, when it says circle is this one, right? Um, that's the actual. Yeah, like the actual, the, yeah, the actual is the one circled in red on the right of your diagram. The red is not. The red is the one I assumed earlier, right? So I assume because I don't know what the polarity is. So I I will assume that you know the polarity is that way, right? This is my assumption. Right. That's my okay. assumption. Let's let's use a square. So that's my assumption. But then it turned out to be the actual polarity is minus plus that way, which match, right? Okay. So that's why I didn't put any negative there. Right. In the actual uh, circuit analysis, you don't actually need to assume. Right? You can just go with the, the actual voltage. Right? But this is just to show you um, um, that uh, if you assume a voltage, that assumption may be wrong, may be correct, depending on um, the actual polarity of the coils. Like this one would be wrong, right? The initial assumption is plus, minus, but the actual polarity is minus plus. Okay, thank okay. you. You're welcome. And let's practice this, right? Um, so let's see. True or false? Uh, I, I want to have a volunteer to answer this. It's okay to be wrong, okay? Um, so is this a true statement? Anybody? Yes. Yes, let me see. Current goes into, right? You can see current into or enters. So this is enters. This is the case where current enters. And if it enters, that means on the other side, on the other coil, this is going to be positive. My assumption is wrong. See that? So therefore, the, the assumption that I have earlier has to put negative. The equation that I have for mutual inductance will be negative of my assumption. Right? So it is yes. Very good. So this is a true. All right, the second one. I'll also watch for the equation for the mutually induced voltage, right? That, that's also correct, right? It's di1. If I put di2, that's strong, right? Because remember mutually induced voltage is due to the other current. That's if I put m di2, that's wrong. It should be di1 because it's current. Is caused by I1, not I2. All right, how about this one, the next one? What do you think? True. True? Okay, let's check. In this next one, current is entering the second coil. See that? So this is another case of current entering. When the current enters, that means on the other coil, in this case, coil number one, the polarity should be positive. If that's positive, that means this is negative. Ah, that matches with my initial assumption. That's why I, it's a plus, or you can just ignore the plus, right? You don't need to put a negative sign. Okay, very good. So this is also A true. The third one. Any volunteer on the third one? True or false? True. Okay, let's check. Uh, here, the current is on the second coil, as you can see right there. Now here's a case where current leaves the dotted terminal, right? Leaves, right? You can tell from the fact that it is leaving the coil through the dotted terminal. If it is leaving, that means on the other side, on the first coil, this would be negative, right? If, it, if that's negative, that means this is positive. And look, it matches with my assumption, which is good. So then, uh, yeah, so there, therefore it's a plus there, it's not a minus there, right? And check the current, that's correct, it's I2, not I1. Okay, very good, it's a true. Um, last one, maybe? Is it the last one? Yes, it is. Who wants to do the last one? 
False. False. Okay, let's check. Um, this one current goes into the first coil, right? Right there. That's the first coil. Uh, from here is we can see that current enters, right? Enters the coil through the dotted terminal. If it enters, that means enters. That means on the other side, on the second coil at the dotted terminal should be posi uh, positive, right? So it should be positive. If that's positive, that means this is going to be negative. And as you can see, it's uh, the opposite of my assumption, right? If it's um, if it's um, the opposite of my assumption, this would be negative, not positive, right? So this is a false. Very good. Good job. Right. Any questions on this? So again, make sure if you're still confused, uh, make sure you uh, review this at home and if you still, uh, or you can ask it now, if you uh, uh, review it at home and still and understand it, make sure that you stop by office hours. Okay. All right. Next one is um, so we're going to apply those uh, dot conventions again when we look into uh, when we when we do circuit analysis of mutually induced uh, coils. Okay, later. But for now, the next one is how do you um, get the total equivalent inductance if you have a couple coils? If you have self-induced self-inductance, self-inductances, let's say I have, let me go back to this line page or this uh, kind of paper. If let's say I have mutually, not mutually, sorry, self-induced self-inductance, the first inductance, the second inductance, right? So it has its own core right there. So they're not on the same core, they're on different core, right? Now, if let's say you connect the two, you connect the two, here's L1, here's L2, then you learn from previous circuit class that if you have inductances, right, inductors uh, in series, then the equivalent inductance would be L1 plus L2 if they're in series, right? If they are in parallel, right, if they are in parallel, This, but then what? Then L1, if this is L1, L2, then um, L equi equivalent would be L1 times L2 over L1 plus L2, right? That's what you learned from previous second class. Okay, now what about if these are all, these two are on the same core? What if they, the inductances, the inductors are on the same core like this? How do you calculate the um, equivalent inductance? Right. So be careful. This is going to be different. Right. So that's what this section is all about. Okay. All right. So notice that I start with two inductors. Right. And two inductors that are wound on the same co uh, core. How do I know it's one on the same core? Because you can see the two bars, the two lines connecting the two. Right. It's above the two inductors. That means they're wound on the same core. And I put this. Uh, symbol M for mutual inductance, right? So now we have not just self-inductances, but also mutual inductances. So how do we, um, how do we get the uh, uh, equal uh, equivalent inductance? All right, so let's look at, um, and then let's say that the dotted terminals are given this way. Those are given. So if you inject current from the left side, right? Then current enters, right? If the current enters, that means on the other side, it's going to be positive, right? Agree? That's the mutual inductance, right? The mutually induced voltage. And then that same current, right, also enters the second coil, right? See that? If that's the case, then on the first coil is also plus. So they're not opposing. They're, they're in series. If you look at the, the voltages, the mutually induced voltages are adding. And they're not opposing, right? Okay, now the self-inductances are easy. That's just L1 plus L2, right? Because it's um, in series, but in this case for the mutual inductances, you can see they're, they're adding, not opposing, right? So equation-wise, this is what I write right here. So voltage from A to B, 
right? You start with the first the first coil. We have two voltages there, right? We have two voltages: self-induced voltage due to L1, and mutually induced voltage due to L2, right? So that's how I write it over here. See that? For for coil number one is L1 di1 dt plus, right? Why is it plus? Because remember I said earlier on the second coil, if the current enters because uh, enters dot dot the terminal, that means on the first coil is also plus, right? And self-induced voltage is always a drop, right? So this is self-induced voltage and you have mutually induced voltage, right? So this is self, this is mutual. So plus minus and plus minus there, they're the same polarity. That's why it's a plus, right? Okay. And you can see the current is I2, right? So that's, um. Voltage across, voltage across L1. Okay. And this one that's caused by self inductance, there's another one that's caused by mutual inductance. Right, right there. And then um, I'm done with L1. How about L2? On L2, I have self induced voltage right here, L2 di2 dt. And I have mutually induced voltage due to L1. And it happens to be, as I said earlier, adding, right? So that's why it's also plus right there. The I1 dt. Okay. However, we know that I1 is equal to I2. It's just call it I because they're in series, right? Series connection. So I can just replace all of this I1 and I2 with I because they're the same current anyways, right? So that's why I have L di1, uh, no, not i1, L1 di, M di, L2 di, M di, right? Just replace everything with i. And from here, you can see that you can group together these two, right? These two are e equal, right? And now you have the sec uh, this equation right here that um, VAB is equal to L1 plus L2 plus 2M di dt, right? And this is how we know how to get the equivalent inductance. So from this example, now we know that the equivalent inductance of this case would be L1 plus L2 plus 2M, okay? So you can see now we have an extra, um, extra term there, right? If it's self-induced, self-inductance is it's just L1 plus L L2. But if they are mutually inductors, mutually coupled inductors, don't forget the 2M. If they are series adding, right? Series adding. Do we have another case for, uh, for series? Yes. It's called series opposing right here. You see the difference between series adding and series opposing? You see the location of the dots, right? Now they're opposing, right? Because if the current goes into the dot the terminal of L1, it means it's leaving the second coil, right? They're opposing each other, right? So therefore the mutually induced voltage would be negatives for both, right? So therefore, if you uh, follow the equation right here, right? Again, for each inductor, you have two voltages, self and, don't forget, self and mutual, right? Same thing with L for L2. The self is easy, right? That's what you already learned. It's a drop, right? Because current goes from left to, to right, so it's a drop. So L1 di1 dt, but uh, mutual here is gonna be negative. Why? Because they're series opposing. Remember that the negative sign comes from the other coil, right? Leaves, that means negative. See that? It's opposing, the, oppos uh, the, oppos the opposite of a drop. It's actually a rise, right? That's why it's negative. And look at the current the I2. So again, these are voltages for L1. Make sense? How about for L2? Well, L2 has two voltages as well, right? Um, self and mutually induced. The self is easy, right? L2 plus is a drop. L2 the I2 dt. And then the, the mutual, it could be tricky, right? If you're not careful. The mutual again is going to be a negative, right? Because why? Because here, the dotted terminal, terminals on the right and on the 
coil one is actually on the left, right? So as the current leaves um, on coil two, current actually enters on coil one, right? So enters means on coil one, she enters coil one, that means on coil two at the dotted terminal, it will be positive, right? So that's arise again. So that's why it's a negative sign. Okay. And then look at the current is di1, not di2, right? And just like, like before, I replace all the currents with i right there. And you can group together the m's. You see that? So now if it's series opposing, the equivalent inductance would be L1 plus L2, stay, still the same as before, the L1 plus L2, but the last term will be different. Instead of positive, it's actually negative. Right. Any questions on this? Can I have another um, case of series opposing of two inductors, a different picture, a different connection? The answer is yes. You can have these two inductors, right? And the dotted terminal is right here and right here. That's also series opposing, right? And here's another case for series adding, right? Different from what I have earlier. Right? Yeah, that's also series adding, right? Agree with this one? Any questions? So if they're on the same side, then it's adding. If the dotted terminals are on different sides, that's opposing, right? How about parallel? Oh, actually, I have an example, sorry. Look at this example. Now I have three, right? Now you can see that the effect of adding and opposing, right? If you have adding uh, connections, that means the M would be additive as well, additive, right? Where is the right here? Right. That's for series adding. For series opposing, then um, the mutual inductance will be subtracting. See that? Okay. Well, my point is that you don't need to go through this uh, derivation. Right. You can just go straight to um, the fact that if it's um, opposing, it's negative inductance, mutual inductance. If it's adding, it's positive. Inductance, right? Okay, let's look at, let's apply it here. I have three now, not two. And I give you uh, all the self inductances. These are all self inductances. And here's mutual inductances, right? Between the two, between two coils, right? All right, let's see. Look at the first one first, right? So it's ask, asking you how to, uh, how to get the equivalent inductance from, uh, from A to B, right? What is L A B? Right. Uh, have a look at the first one. Right. Start with the self inductance. That's easy, right? There's always a drop. So that's always a plus. So self inductance is going to be six. So if you look at coil number one, uh, coil number one, there should be three inductances, right? Uh, one self and two mutual inductance, right? Two mutual inductances. The self is six. That's easy. That's just going to be positive. Look at um, from one to two. The mutual inductance is four. See that between the one and two, mutual inductance is four. Is that opposing or adding? Anybody? Opposing. Opposing. If it's opposing, uh, that means the mutual inductance must be negative. See that negative, negative four. Right. Look at uh, one to three. You can see that's, what is that? Adding or posing? Adding. adding. If it's adding, that means the mutual inductance will be positive. See that? So now I have six, right? Minus four and plus two for the first coil. That equals to four Henry's. Let's do the second coil. Second coil, self-inductance, eight, right? Positive. Now we have to look at the other two mutual inductances, right? The other two, uh, the, uh, the two mutual inductances, I should say. The first one is from number one. Number one to number two is four Henry's. That series opposing, isn't it? So therefore, it's minus four, right? And then from two to three, look, that's also series opposing. And the mutual inductance, five. So therefore, it's going to be 
minus 5. So for second coil, it's going to be 8 minus 4 minus 5. That's going to be minus 1 Henry's, right? Okay. Now, look at the last one. So far, so good? But look at the last one. The self-inductance is 10 Henry's. So put plus 10 Henry's there. The mutual indu induce, uh, mutual inductances would be 5 and uh, 2 right there, right? 2 comes from the first one. See that? One, two, three. Is that series opposing or series adding? As you can see, that series adding, right, on the same side. So therefore, it's going to be positive two. And from number two to number three, you can see this series. That those are series opposing, right? So that's minus five. And I have, if you uh, add the three numbers, you get seven Henry's. So from A to B, you just sum this up, right? Four minus one plus seven. That gives you 10 Henry's from A to B. Are there any questions on this? Now, what about um, um, inductances are they are in parallel, like this one? Right there. Oh my God, I don't know why. There. What do you do with this? I have the derivation. I won't go through uh, the de derivation. I'll let you look at the derivation itself. Again, you use um, a KBL to derive this, just like before, just like the series adding, series opposing, except now we have two loops, right? So two loops, two equation, two unknowns, and you solve for uh, the voltages. And then uh, since they are in parallel, therefore they should be the same voltage, right? And at the end, oh my God, at the end, it keeps scrolling, right? At the end, you have this equivalent inductance or parallel connection, right? And the parallel connection is, would or would be equal to, just like that uh, equation, L1, L2 minus M square over L1 plus L2 minus 2M, okay? That's the equation for two parallel mutually induced inductors, right? Now, if there are um, self-inductors, um, self self-inductance, self-inductances like this, they're not wired, they're not wound on the same um, magnetic core, then of course we know the equation is L1, L2, L1 plus L2, right? Um, let's see if that's true. That's true. Uh, let's prove that this equation actually reduces to that equation if the two are not coupled. Well, if the two are not coupled, that means M is equal to zero, right? If the two are not coupled. So therefore, go ahead and plug in M equals to zero here, and you get the same equation right here, right? Any questions on this? Okay, if there's no questions, then, um, Let's move on to this uh, next section. I still have five minutes. Now we're going into circuit analysis. Right, right here. Um, yeah. So now we, we, we're getting, it's getting more complicated, right? Because now I have um, currents in both coils. Remember earlier, in earlier cases, there's always, always one current, right? Either coil one or coil two. Now I have two currents right there, right? So how do we deal with uh, circuit analysis? How do we do circuit analysis when we have mutually induced voltages or coils, which you couple coils, right, with two currents such as this, right? All right, so we can apply the dot convention, remember that, okay? And if you look at the first coil, well, let me do this, yes. Let's say circuit number one right here, and that's circuit number two right here, right? Look at uh, KVL around the first loop, right? Loop number one right there. By KVL, I have V1, I1 plus R1, right? Because the current, I assume, the, uh, not assume, I, um, I, um, yeah, I assume, I assume current is actually going clockwise, right? Clockwise on left on loop number one and counterclockwise on loop number two. See that? 
Okay, if that's the case, then by KVL on the left hand loop, I, know I have V1 equals I1, I1 times R1, so that's plus minus, right? that's a drop right, right there. Um, and then we have self inductance, right? Self induced voltage, that's easier, there's always a drop right, right there. Look at the current I1. And then we, I have another voltage, don't forget, from where? Well, from the other coil, because the other coil has current, right? And how do we determine the polarity here? Well, dot convention, right? Because now you are doing um, mutual, mutually induced voltage. On the second coil, current goes into the dotted terminal, right? If the current goes into, that means on the other, other coil, in this case, coil number one, the polarity would be positive as well, right? Positive, negative, right? So that's the M side, okay? So now you can see that on the first coil, on the first loop on the left, right? The mutually induced voltage is positive. And don't, don't forget that it is I2, not I1, right? Any question on that first equation? All right. On the next uh, equation, on the from the second loop, right hand loop, right? You can see that. Let me erase this now, so you won't get confused. Right. So now focus on the second loop, right? On the right hand, the right hand loop. Go ahead and do KVL. Again, I assume that current flows counterclockwise. Right. So that's a rise, right? V2 is equal to, uh, that's a drop, right? Current flows that way, it's a drop. So I, I2, R2, and self-induced voltage on L2, that's easy, that's also a drop, right? Right there, plus L2, di 2 dt. And then are we done with this? Of course not, right? Because I have current on the first coil. And uh, so now I have mutually induced voltage here, right? From L1. So how do we determine the polarity? Well, take a look at the first circuit. How does the current flow into the dotted terminal on the first circuit? Well, it enters, right? Because it's clockwise. Enters, that means on coil number two, at the dotted terminal is gonna be plus, minus. So you can see it's also a drop. See that? The I1 dt. Make sense? Okay, let's do one more and then we can adjourn. This one, right? Uh, clockwise, counterclockwise, right? The currents on both coils. Let's do the left-hand loop, right? Left-hand side of the loop, uh, you can see V1 is a rise, voltage rise, equals a drop right there, I1, R1, and we have self-induced voltage, that's L1, D, I1, DT, plus mutually induced voltage from where? From the second coil, right? On the second coil, since it's, it's um, counterclockwise, current is leaving the dotted terminal. If it's leaving, that means on the first coil, the, the polarity would be negative. If it's, a, if it's negative, that means it's positive right here. That's not a drop, that's a rise. That's why it's negative, right? M D I two DT, right? No, last one. This uh, uh, loop right there, there is no source. So that's for zero, a zero equal to, is counterclockwise, so that's a drop right there to our uh, through our um, across R2. It's a drop, right? And then we have self induced voltage. Now, for self induced voltage, it doesn't matter where the dot terminal is, it's always a drop, it's always a drop, right? So it's going to be plus, right? Uh, the one uh, the dotted terminal becomes um, uh, an issue with mutually induced voltage, right? You don't need to pay attention to the dotted terminal for self induced, but you do for mutually induced. For self induced, always a drop, right? That's why it's plus L2 di2 dt. Now, how do you determine the mutually induced voltage? Well, take a look at the other coil. Current is entering. See that? The coil, the first coil. If it enters, that means on coil number two, at the dotted terminal should be a plus. If there's a plus, that means this is a minus. You can see clearly that's a rise, voltage rise, not drop. That's why it's negative. And look, it's the I1. Okay.